Hello and welcome to this breaking news edition of Convict Inc. I'm your host, Robert Rosso. Several weeks ago, I put out a statement from Benny Geritano about a man named Stevie Mad Dog Arena. Today, I'm here with a recording, one of several, or one of many, I should say, recordings of Benny Geritano discussing the incident and other things. If you guys don't know who Benny or Batista Geritano is, Benny's from a long line of wise guys. His dad was Anthony Shorty Muscuzio, I believe, is that how you pronounce it? Who was in John Gotti's inner circle, or so reports say. His uncle was Preston Geritano, who was a Genovese associate. Benny himself is report, was or is reportedly a Gambino associate. Many considered Benny Geritano a one-man wrecking crew, a one-man mafia member, a mob, in by, a mob by himself. He has disrespected wise guys, uh, connected guys, uh, and many guys alike. If you go do a, a quick Google search, you can spend some time reading about Benny and it's kind of like, wow. I knew Benny from USP Lewisburg. He was in on a crime for stealing money out of lock boxes. In fact, they had a 10 year, him and a crew of guys had a 10 year spree in which they'd go around different parts of the country. They'd go to night drop boxes and they'd fish money out with, with uh, fish hooks and other tools, they had walkie-talkies, they had, they, had they had this down pat. For 10 years, these guys got away with it. Ultimately, he was tried and convicted and got it 71 months and was sent to Lewisburg where I met him. Benny Giartano became the celly of Tommy Reynolds, part of the Bath Avenue crew, who be also is a very close friend of mine. We all were very close. Benny, my, Tommy, myself, and one of my friends named Dusty Burst. We shared a lot of memories together. We did a lot of things together. A um, lot of meals, a lot of, lot of talk about family. Uh, those guys, all three of them were there for me during my, my uh, cancer, when I was diagnosed with bladder cancer and was sent back from the hospital to the prison, um, bleeding with uh, catheters in me and, and miserable and in pain. So those three hold a special place in my heart. Uh, these these are guys that, that are, are my good friends. Even to this day, I consider them all my good friends. Benny's been involved in several stabbings um, in New York. The most famous one was with the guy named, he had a, a popular pizzeria, Mark. What was uh, uh Mark? I'm sorry. Man, I stabbed in trouble, night club, December. Oh, Mark Iacona, owner of Lucal, is that how you say it, pizzeria? Uh, most recently, he was involved in a, well, he has been indicted, charged, and convicted of a stabbing in which he says he is innocent. I'll let uh, Benny go ahead and uh, talk about that in this recording. Now, let me be clear. The victim of this stabbing incident was Nunzio Fusco, who I have a statement from right here, who since the beginning has always been saying that Benny Giratano did not do it. Let me be. Let me be clear. I Nunzio was the victim of the stabbing uh, in 2012 at a nightclub called nu no Novo. Terrible, terrible. As I have stated to police officers, prosecutors, and various attorneys, I do not know of the identity of the person who stabbed me. Um, he goes on to say that his recollection of this and knowledge of this incident has not changed. Has not changed. So. Benny believes, in a, in a nutshell, Benny believes that he's in prison today, not because of anything to do with the stabbing, but has everything to do with Stevie Mad Dog Arena. And this recording will touch base on it, but we'll go deeper into why he believes that. And there's other people involved or other people that he calls out or names, including a guy named Johnny Hollywood who allegedly had a sit down over the incident that Benny will be discussing. Let me be clear here to everybody out on the East Coast, especially people um, in so-called uh, crime families, Mr. Stevie Mad Dog Arena 
Johnny Hollywood. I, I have not even done a simple Google search about either one of you. I cannot tell anybody what, what how old these guys are or if they're Benny's age or old. I think I think they're older. I'm sorry. I think they're older. I think they're 60s, 70s, or at least TV. Please let me say that to you, Mr. Arena, and to you, um, Johnny Hollywood, Mr. Hollywood, whatever, this isn't personal. This is not about... I, I, do, I am not doing this to degrade, demean, put you in jeopardy, um, to uh, harass, uh, anything like that. Either one of you guys. I know, I, again... If people, I, I, maybe you guys have watched my show or somebody, I say this and I'll say this time and time again. I am from the West Coast. I am from San Pedro, California, born and raised. I currently live in the state of Arkansas. I did nearly 24 years in, in federal prison, 23 years, eight months and one day. And during that time, I became very close with some important or infamous crime figures in your life. Specifically, Carmine Persico, Tommy Karate, Bobby Manna, um, Greg De Palma, uh, Fat Sal. I can go on and on and the list is long. The, the point is this. I, I never cared anything about the mafia. The, the mafia means nothing to me. I don't say that disrespectfully. Disrespectfully. In the area in which I grew up, organized crime had no bearing. I, 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 I idolized surfers. I was a surfer. Um, I, I was going to say that the only thing I knew about was gangs, but that's not true either. Maybe I analyzed Scarface, Al Pacino. But when I went to prison, and I first person I met actually was John Stampa, meant nothing to me. When I met Carmine Persico, meant nothing to me. Um, Carmine became like a father to me, and uh, I miss him dearly. That's the truth. So anyway, I have said on my show repeatedly also this. Being from the West Coast, we do not hold, in, in general, most guys from the West Coast do not hold a favorable opinion of the Mafia or guys in organized crime from the East Coast or Kansas City, New York, uh, Chicago, whatever. The Mafia, okay? La Cosa Nostra, what, the, what, the, what the, the media calls the Mafia or La Cosa Nostra. I'm going to put it that way. Likewise, most guys from that life look down on guys like me. Bald head, goatee, dope fiend, California junkie, whatever. So... That, I'm not saying that to be disrespectful. I'm saying that because I have seen many so-called wise guys, bosses, um, etc., in federal prison that people in your life and that life would be ashamed of, quite frankly. I do not take pride in pointing out guys that are in the mob that have been extorted, slapped, um, ran game on, it's very true. It's And Benny talks about it in the recording. Um, that does not mean that there are not men. Carmine Persico was a man. He died a man. Um, Tommy Karate, good friend of mine, loved the guy to death, man. And how do I, why do, what do I mean by that? I've never known Carmine to ever be extorted. I've never known Tommy Karate to ever be extorted. I've never known... Tommy Reynolds to ever be extorted. I've never known uh, Fat Sal to be extorted. Uh, these guys also fought. They would throw punches. They would fight people. They didn't back down. They couldn't be pressed upon. And there's a lot of guys in organized crime that have, uh, that I've witnessed, that, I, that the gang in which I was involved in has been a part of, that it was the Dirty White Boys, by the way. So my view of Organized crime is a little bit different than uh, some most. And I do not mean that to be disrespectful. Um, I do know two guys currently that are in that life on that coast that I think I think the world of, that, that are free today, that I've talked to, but I'll never put their names out because you guys will get them. <laughs> uh, but that's the truth. So uh, uh, I don't want anybody to be offended by my words. I'm just trying to tell you my point of view. The reason I am doing this today is because Benny Giratano is my friend. I consider him a friend. If you've seen my videos in the past weeks, I've put out letters from Tommy Karate about Jimmy Calandra, who's lying about him uh, repeatedly. And the reason I've done so is because Tommy Karate is my friend. 
Tommy Reynolds, former Bath Avenue, is my friend. I stick up for my friends. It doesn't mean that my friends are always right. I'm giving you my point of view. Their point of view, what Benny Gertano is about to say, is their story. It is not Robert Rosso's. Do not, uh, do not kill the messenger, so to speak. Now, I have talked to attorneys that have said, you know, you can be liable for slander if something happens and so forth. Um, I've actually looked into that and, and I can't. That's not true. But I, I, I'm, again, I want to be so respectful. Uh, yes, I'm putting these stories out. I, this is nothing personal to anybody that Benny talks about. You will hear me on these recordings say, yes, uh, it's true that people on the outside who follow the mafia life, who watch the, the mafia documentaries, who are all part of that, would be highly disappointed if they saw their popular organized crime figures in prison. Most of them, not all of them, most of them, okay? So please, I don't, I don't want my words twisted. Um, anyway, that, that's a position I will not turn away from. It is the truth. Uh, again, I, I respected guys and treated guys they waged the way they treated me. When guys who are outlaw bikers, mob members, gang members, I don't care if it's the Aryan Brotherhood, the Emmy, and it doesn't matter. <clears throat> um, when they're in prison, you don't have you don't have guns, chains, and you usually don't have a bunch of people. Uh, the gangs, the Emmy and the Aryan Brotherhood are a little different. Um, it, when a man is stripped down, all the way stripped, and when they're all the way stripped down, you can really tell something about a man. <clears throat> That's my point. Anyway, again, so I, I go on now. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and bring up and, and go ahead and just uh, put this recording on. Benny calls me. I have something which is called tape a call on my phone. This is my work phone. Uh, it's, a, it's a deal I worked out with the US probation actually uh, because of calls from prison. I have been allowed to correspond uh, due to journalism work. I, I am saying this right now. This is my YouTube channel. When I refer to me as a journalist, I have written in the past for Vice, The Fix, Gorilla Convict. Um, there's like three or four other ones. Um, I would not consider this a piece of journalism per se. I am saying that this is Benny Gerritano's story. I'm letting him tell it. When he refers to that we, me and him, are going to be putting out more of these stories, yes, it's true. I do not have a bone to pick with any Mafia members. I do not want to expose the Mafia or whatever. But again, I will say this, and, and I want to be clear. Uh, I do believe that there are many children who look up to, to crime fiction, organized crime, gangs, biker gangs, whatever. And I think that putting these stories out will help them maybe choose a better path. Why? Uh, again, because I think that if, if people knew more of the truth, that these guys who, who are somebody on the street, they, they, they go to prison and, and, and in many cases um, are slapped, extorted, uh, robbed from and do nothing and so on. And that's the truth. They also, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to thank Michael Francis for making this clear, work with law enforcement. They don't consider that ratting. Michael Francis said in a tape about Carmine Persico, uh, the issue was, is, was Carmine Persico a rat? Michael Francis says emphatically, no. But when talking about organized crime figures working with police, he admits there in other cases, yeah, they worked with cops. Uh, they went after the son of Sam. They went to the mob to go like around him. Just go listen to my, what Michael Francis says. The point is, people might not think that's wrong. I, I might not, not even think that's wrong. I'm not saying I do. I'm saying this. What about all the kids that grew up who would never in a million years think that, that their organized crime bosses, underbosses, and figures would work with police? That, they're like the anti-police. You're not supposed to be a snitch. You're not supposed to do anything. But what if they knew that they were working with law enforcement? 
before they tried to impress wise guys and went out and started killing people like the Bath Avenue crew did. That's my point. So maybe this can deter kids from joining the life of crime or being in that life. I'm sure that life can be glamorous to some. I know it's not glamorous to a lot of my friends that are in prison doing life sentences. Um, that's all I'm saying. Again, no disrespect to anybody. And here I will shut my mouth about me and my feelings, and I will let you guys listen to Benny Geritano. You know, it's, uh, anyway, uh, at this point, you know, so whenever you write, read the sponsorship, you can spot it, and then we'll go into it right away, because they're going to do, you know, Rob and I are going to do, uh, you know, the continuation of the sponsorship, you know, the sponsorship 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 of the spon
And as a matter of fact, uh, come to find out, I, I did time with this man's cousin. And his cousin was also in the same block as me, Benny, Tommy, and Dusty. And every time I think of his cousin, I smile. And it's like a warm place in my heart. And I, and I, and I just I love this dude to death. Therefore, I have big respect because of my feelings for his cousin, uh, who's from New York, who's part of that street scene. I, uh, I, I can't help but like this guy, no matter if he's going to be mad at me later on. We might be yelling at me for this later, but it is what it is. So that's what he's talking about when he's talking about people contacting me and so forth. I kind of got lost there, but I always do. I ramble on, blah, blah, blah. I know, I know. I'll get better one day. So let's go back. You, uh, a week or every other week. Hold on. So if, if, if what I was saying wasn't true, you, you know, there would be no reason for people to have lawyers call you and all types of other individuals try to call you to prevent you and I from doing these things. But for all of them that are listening, you know, we'll let you know that we, we, we will continue to pick one of you uh, a week or every other week uh, at a very different uh, group that you clowns belong to out there because some of you are a bunch of clowns. You know, and there are a bunch of good men involved out there, you know, uh, uh, alive as well. So, real quick, what Benny's saying is, I, I've actually got a lot of tapes, okay? He's saying that he's going to, he wants to do a series of drip, drip, drip. So, once a week, uh, kind of put something out that he knows um, of organized crime figures or people that work with the cops or that have done this or done that. Um, that's what he's saying there. Kind of takes away from the, the, the point of this story. And again, we'll get into all that. I just wanted to kind of clarify some things as he went along. I'll just make notes and then I'll maybe address it after. I, we'll see. Shoot. The whole situation. But the rest of you is a douchebag. And you know you a douchebag. Rob and I know you a douchebag. We all know you a douchebag. For all of them that are listening, you know, we'll let you know that. We, we, we will continue to pick one of you uh, a week or every other week. Uh, a very different uh, group that you clowns belong to out there because some of you are a bunch of clowns. You know, and there are a bunch of good men involved out there, you know, uh, uh, alive as well. Maybe fifteen percent of the uh, of the uh, the total situation. But the rest of you are douchebags. You know, you douchebags. Rob and I know you are douchebags. We all know you are douchebags. We we watch you get abused and extorted and all kinds of tactics and techniques in, in prison. And you know, you've got all kinds of excuses for it. So real quick, just, just for the audience, and just for people that don't know, so he's specifically talking to uh, talking about alleged or reported organized crime figures. Well, actually, a lot of them have already admitted to there being a monster, so I guess not really the well, I mean, they, they would say that you and I are, are out of our minds, but, you know, they'll say, oh, you know, this is supposed to be a secret society. <clears throat> you know, not a secret society. People rat every fucking time they get pension. You know, you got bosses telling people what's going on. You got rats that came home and are driving around the neighborhood and hanging out in the streets and doing business switches. And, you know, even when you know you got guys that are rats around, you should take a dollar from them and you don't care. Oh, they're with me. They're not a rat, you know. So you're a rat, you know. And these are things that I've been experiencing for 40 years. And I'm tired of it. I've been in jail for decades. And I'm not in jail now for stabbing a, a man in the nightclub. I'm in jail because, you know, the mob, these so-called rat wise guys, went and contacted people who have law enforcement relatives and they told them that I'm the one who committed the crime and not the man who was identified at the scene of the crime by the victim's girlfriend. You know, and this victim knows I didn't I didn't commit this crime against him. You know, he never testified at any moment that I did. And uh, here I am, I mean, I've been in prison for nearly 10 years because these guys are influential. You know, as rats, you know, as much rats that they are, as tactics that they are, that they use, or... You know, these guys, you know, they have lawyers in their pockets, you know, these lawyers, you know, you come around now, you see these lawyers, these, some of these lawyers, they want to act like they're gangsters. You're a fucking lawyer. You're not supposed to act like a gangster. But you got, you know, this day and age, they're bringing guys into the loop that are ex-cops, auxiliary police officers, uh, attorneys, uh, you know. This is what happens when you don't have people who are supposed to, uh, you know, be at the top of the, uh, the totem pole, at the top of the totem pole. And you've got guys that work in delis. Yeah, they are today. They got guys. They, they got rank. I mean, you know, who are you fucking, Captain Hand Slicer? I mean, were you kidding me? Here? You're talking about guys in the street that 
that have been grinding in the street for 30 years, maximum security prisons. You come home, you got guys that were selling hot dogs on the fucking corner trying to tell you what to do. I mean, this is why we're doing this. I mean, we're going to expose you. Okay, so so I want to be I want to be I want to be clear. So I have a segment called Mob Monday. I've been talking about different organized crime figures that I have been associated with, been around, or personally known uh, in central prison. Uh, from being from the West Coast, and I, and I have to repeat this, I never gave a damn about mafia organized crime because it didn't affect my life. So I had a different view of it. So when I was around a lot of these guys, especially when you're from the West Coast, you know that you got that West Coast attitude, the California prisoner thing, and, and you kind of look down on organized crime figures as they look down on us from the West Coast and call us junkies, losers, whatever. Anyway, so my point of saying that is, Benny, you're from New York, I'm from the West Coast, we both have um, similar perspectives, actually, and I've said openly and repeatedly, I have seen a lot of guys in prison that are so-called wise guys or bosses or this or that that, that were stopped as cotton in prison that weren't real men in prison, Soft as cotton. that were extorted, that were... Uh, uh, They're a disgrace. Or scammed. It's a, it's, it's, they are a disgrace. Having said that, wait, having said that, there are some good ones. And I'm not just saying some of the guys that I knew, such as Carmen Burst, Tommy, Tommy Crotty, or Tommy Reynolds, or whatever. I'm saying that there are guys, there are stand-up guys, but in general, I think people would be highly disappointed in their organized crime figures if they saw them incarcerated. That's my opinion. I, mean, I feel it's humiliating to a guy like me. I mean, I'm a gorilla. I'm really from the, from the street. How do you think, yeah. how do you yeah. think I feel? I mean, it's humiliating. You know, especially that I come home, I've been in prison most of my life. I come home from a prison cell, and, you know, I'm out there trying to do the right thing, working, trying to collect legitimate money from me. And I got guys like this rat, Stevie Mando, having these people who owe me money for my parole officer. And then they admit, Stevie told us to do, hire a private investigator to follow me around when I find out about that. Hey, who's this guy you sent? Well, Stevie told us to do. This guy's an ex-U.S. Marshal. Stevie told you to hire an ex-U.S. Marshal to follow me around while I'm in a halfway house and I'm on parole? I mean, I, I'm, I'm already the okay. federal parole officer. That's so we, we, we really need to, I guess this will be in a different phone call, and go back and outline and start from the beginning exactly what happened and why you believe or know, whatever, however you want to word it, uh, why you're there today. You know, we can go all the way back and start with probably Jimmy Ida's story, right? Well, I mean, yeah, you know, uh, uh, well, this guy used the Jimmy Ida situation, you know, as an excuse to approach me. Um, it is, that had nothing to do with him from the very beginning. He used the Jimmy Ida thing as a foundation. So let me let me stop real quick because I have to say something. Um, I, I said if you can hear me that we need to start from the beginning because he's saying um, um, Mr. Arena, Stevie Mad Dog is a rat, right? He's not giving the context, the background. I have it on other recordings. I do. Um, there are some of them that are really clear. We talked over and over again, and I said that we needed to go back and do like an opening and start it up, okay? In this conversation, really, so what What it was is this was just us talking about stuff. Um, there was a point to where I felt like I wasn't even going to use this tape. But in the end, I figured I'll just use this for for the opening. You'll You'll hear more. But it does not go and give the whole background and point by point. And that's what we want, bulletin points, because he's making serious allegations against people, okay? And there needs to be context. He needs to name names, and he will. So when he says that Mr. Arena is a rat, and he went to the, he's talking about ex-FBI marshals, there's, there's a story. Some, okay. Benny was owed $2 million by two brothers that have a construction company. This I know. I was there when he made the phone calls from prison. Uh, he was promised a cut for sending people. He, he it was commissioned, basically. And he's saying when he came home, Stevie Mad Dog approached him right before he even had, a, had any food, kissed a woman. He'll say that. And Mad Dog said, hey, uh, you know, these guys, these two brothers, they're with me. You leave them alone. So your $2 million is gone. And, and Benny's like, hey, 
Well, I mean, he, I guess he verbally abused him, okay? Uh, the next day, and you'll hear Benny saying that he was um, thrown on the ground because somebody called and said he had a gun on him. The, he went to the parole office. The parole office said that somebody called and said he had a gun on him. He then gets a, there's a private investigator who knows one of Benny's friends who then says the brothers of the construction company hired the private investigator. Benny went and confronted them. They said, Stevie Mad Dog made us do it. That's where, that's what he leaves out here. And again, he does name the names all the way through, including the law enforcement officers. He said Stevie called. Okay, I want to be clear about that because um, it, as we go through here, I can't remember the whole conversation. It's about 30 minutes. I, he never quite connects those dots. And I don't want uh, Mr. Arena to slander um, without context. Again, the, his attorney, I'm not going to say the attorney's name, but I will. And, I, and I, like I said, I, I, I think highly of, of Mr. Arena's attorney. No, no, no BS. And you guys, will, you guys will understand when he reveals himself. He's going to make a statement eventually, maybe not on this one, uh, maybe on the next one, because I think he might want to wait for, for him to detail. We'll see. But I hope, I just want to point that out. Um, I, I, th I think it would be better for me to stop and try to give context as it goes. So let me, let me back up. I can back up 30 seconds. Yeah. And outline and start from the beginning exactly what happened. And why you believe or know, whatever, however you want to word it, uh, why you're there today. You know, we can go all the way back and start with probably Jimmy Ida's story, right? Well, I mean, yeah, you know, uh, uh, well, this guy used the Jimmy Ida situation, you know, as an excuse to approach me. Um, it is, that had nothing to do with him from the very beginning. He used the Jimmy Ida thing as a foundation. Uh, you know, when I came home, very first day out of the halfway house. You know, didn't even have a real street meal yet. Very first day, didn't even kiss a woman yet. This is all these years. And here's this guy uh, looking for me on a corner uh, uh, of a downtown public street in Brooklyn, New York, trying to instigate an argument with me to get me violated. Steve, you know? Steve, Steve, we Steve, have Steve, an Steve, argument. Over, over, yeah, we have an argument, and, and you know, and I'm like, listen, get the fuck out of here, please, right? Beautiful. And the very next morning, I come out of the halfway house, and I'm having a, a business meeting with uh, with an electrical contractor and my brother. And uh, all of a sudden, here comes 20 police officers running out of nowhere, cars reaching. Someone called and says, I had a gun on me. It's got me, my brother, an electrical contractor on the ground. Very second day out of the head. I didn't even have street ID. I had Euro prisons ID. The cops were like, what kind of identification is this? Well, I'm in the head. I got to, you know, well, you better call them to let them know what's going on. So I, I almost got locked up the first and second day because of this man. I mean, you can call it coincidence, you can call it whatever you want, but when you're in the games of cops and robbers, you know, coincidence causes people. Right, right, right. Uh, okay, so maybe, but we're going to need to go into that. Like, why, why, why do you believe or do you know that, that he was, Stevie was actually uh, the reason? You know what I mean? So, because right now, right now, yeah, go ahead. Okay, so I'll tell you, so I had construction deals, you know, going on, and I had done some from prison, and um, the feds also knew that I was doing these deals from prison. So yeah, I was I was there too. I was actually there when you were doing it too. Yeah, everyone was there. You were there, Tommy was there, yeah. Danny was there, Jimmy. Yes. All kinds of people were there. And yeah. here I am, and I'm negotiating deals with these people, and the deals get solidified, and I get guaranteed my commission as a, as a consultant. And uh, I'm entitled to a certain amount of money. So this guy is trying to intervene. Because that's what he does. He's a parasite. He's trying to intervene and talking about, well, you know, uh, these people, now my friends, you know, uh, you need to forget about the $2 million, and I'll make sure that... Uh, my friends forget about the Jimmy Ida issue. I don't give a fuck about what your friends think or what you think or the Jimmy Ida. Okay. Okay, wait. The black guy in the joint stepped in front of me never once had a fucking word to say. So when the Italian guy comes into the joint, he wants to pull rank. I mean, what are you oh. kidding me? What is this a joke? Okay, so wait. So so you said a lot of things that people might know the back, not know the backstory of. While you were in Lewisburg, you got into, well, a physical altercation with Jimmy Ida and uh, Hippie, or, uh, a.k.a. Mikey, I love my wife, a.k.a. Mikey Van Perdino. Yeah, Mikey, I love my wife. Good okay. I, I happen to like Mikey, I love my Me wife. too. Mikey, yeah, somebody, somebody on one of my lives last night asked me, I'm like, man, Mike, I like the hell out of Mikey. <laughs> you know? So Mikey, yeah, Mikey, I love my wife, he's a great guy. You know, um, he was just put in a bad situation because, you know. Yeah, he was walking with Jimmy. Yeah, he's, he's one of Jimmy's guys. 
and you know Jimmy put him in a bad situation. But you know, that's not from just another Genovese family rep. You know, like, this guy tough going from Spaghetti Park. You know, I'm working out with Mike, and we're on the bench, and he's talking about this guy's a great guy, he's a legend, he's this, he's a guy's a fucking rat. Try to make my kid brother and his friends rat on the kid who stabbed his son. So Who's that? Get exposed. So this guy tough Tony from Spaghetti Park, this Corona guy. So this guy's a stool pigeon. So I was in jail in 2000. I was fighting a homicide case, and um, this kid gets stabbed in one of these clubs in Queens, and all of a sudden, uh, you know, the kid's got a knife on him, tough Tony. He used to come into the place I heard like Rocky Balboa, like with the security around him and everything. <laughs> And, and yeah, I mean, like a real joke, you know. And then the kid got stabbed, and he had a knife in his waist. He threw it in the air. He started screaming, ratted on the kid who stabbed him, uh, and sent the kid to jail. But anyway, these guys were trying to, can you believe how dirty these guys are? They were trying to make good, solid kids become rats. They were trying to scare them. They sent these guys down to meet other guys from where we're from to, to get these good kids to go to a fucking lawyer's office to give statements against the kid who stabbed his son. So it didn't get exposed that his son is a fucking rat. And this is why uh, I had the problem with that. I mean, so when me and Mike were working out, we were on the weight pit. Mike, I love my wife. He's got the 315 on the flat bench. When he's telling me the guy's a good guy, he walked away, I left the weight on his chest, he couldn't breathe. So get the fuck out of here. Oh, you know, I see, I see, I see. Yeah. yeah. But you want to make, you want to make a guy who will try to make my kid, brother, and his friends become rats. You want to sit there and preach to me, he's a great guy. I got, got you. Get fun. So I Jimmy Ida didn't like that. You understand? So Jimmy Ida had to calm, you know, with his fucking rank shit. I got to get him boss. Well, fucking boss. We're in the penitentiary. So, you know, he thought he was going to put his hand in my face and throw a punch. And, you know, he got slapped, you know. And then, you know, they okay. were going to man. So I this guy, you know, he's digging his grave. Digging my grave. So wait, that, wait, wait a minute. Uh, uh, Benny, so that's what caused the Benny Ida. That's what, that was the starting point with Benny Ida, with uh, Jimmy Ida? Oh, I thought it, I swear, I thought it was over oh, over the situation with Pino. Oh, with Pino? No, well, yeah. Pino was the excuse, you understand? They're always looking for excuses. Okay. Instead of coming, okay. Instead of coming and confronting the situation, they're always looking for excuses. Okay, so, so, like yeah, so. Yeah, so they so, use Pino's situation to justify the tough Tony situation. He's a right, how you going to justify it? Okay, so real quick, so real quick, so what Benny said about uh, tough Tony uh, being a rat or whatever, uh, okay. Okay, I need to stop. Tough Tony, uh, whoever the guy is, I have no clue. Um, Benny and Mike Zanfordina, Zanfordino, uh, hippie, a.k.a. Mikey, I love my wife, um, were working out. This guy, Tough Tony, comes up. I think so. Mikey was allegedly Lucchese, with the same thing as Jimmy Ida. So what happens is... Um, when he said that this guy, Tough Tony, was a good guy, Benny had knowledge that the guy's that this guy tough tony was trying to press kenny's uh benny's kid brother and his friend to make statements saying that so that tough tony's son would be look like a rat mikey said that tough tony was a good guy benny walked away from him okay that's what started the issue because this this same day in a little while benny jimmy ida swings on him benny hits J jimmy ida Hippie jumps in, Benny hits Hippie, or Mike Yellow, my wife. I thought that this was over myself. A little backstory on that. There's a guy named Pino who was the boss of New, the New Jersey family. Um, 70 years old, I think he's never been to prison, got a life sentence. He ends up in my cell when I'm in the hole. At Lewisburg, we played that. That's my cell, that's my cell, that's my cell, hole or not. Pino would not leave my cell. I had the best cell. I had contraband in the walls, drugs, knives, you name it. I needed back in that cell. Pino was slow walking it, pissing me off. I, I was He was older. I was respectful because of his age. Um, but he started like playing me. So then my celly, Billy Bruce, gets into it with him. And Benny goes over and, and says, hey, like, you know, what are you doing? Pino and Billy, he stops it. Then he goes and tells Danny Fama and Mike Ellen, my wife, hey, get this dude Pino out of here. Um, somebody's going somebody's gonna to hit him in the head with the lock. They twisted it, so Benny will say, and turned it into that Benny was going to hit Pino in the head with the lock. Pino and Jimmy Ida were friends. So that when Jimmy Ida got into a fight with Benny or swung on him and Benny did what he did, I thought it was all over myself. I did not know the backstory about this part with him and Mikey Zanfernino. That was my whole point. Because before I put it out there that that's why Benny got in a fight and that it was just a part of it. He's saying they used the thing about Pino as an excuse. It was really about this 
uh, Benny calling this tough Tony a fucking rat. I, I didn't actually know that part. What I knew was uh, Pino. They all know that. They all know that. You know what, Mikey? I love my wife. Told me when I told him that. What? He said, man, you know, a guy can't control his son or what his son does. They always come up with excuses. Oh, you can't control his okay. son. Well, how can you be in a position to control men if you can't control your son? My father, Shorty, okay, had 20 Lord picks around him. And when he spoke, it was like when Dodge spoke to Moses on the mount. We didn't even question what he said because he hit us over the head with an axe handle, give us a beat, and hit us with a chip. He wasn't no big fucking tough Tony. He didn't come in like Rocky Balbo. Right. When he spoke, we listened. I mean, you know, these guys are always looking at for excuses. To justify their wrongs. Oh, okay, so real, so, so real quick, real quick, because I put it out there before. So Pino was friends with Jimmy Ida from the East from New Jersey. He was a boss over New Jersey, right? Yeah, but they weren't friends with him. That's why they didn't want him in J-Block. So when I told Mike, I said, Mike, listen, this guy Pino's creating problems over here. You know, he was in my cell. He, he moved into my cell when I was in the hole. Yeah, he moved yeah. in your cell. He's creating problems here. He's saying derogatory things. You know, why don't you get this guy moved down there? Because I don't want to see this guy get hurt. He's an old man. Yeah. You know, Rob's monkey was already going to beat him up. I had to come running at himself. Yeah. Stuff. I mean, you know, I mean, how much do you just want me to do? He hangs out with you people. You don't hang out with me. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and you know, and, and, and then somebody went and twisted it. You know, right away. So what do you want? The kids went, what do you want? We wait for one of these guys to hit him over the head with a lock and a sock. And then six months later, after we go to the hole, after we have to fight with Mike and, and Jimmy, it comes out that 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 the stupid guy. Remember they used to call him the stupid guy. John Tony, I always call him the stupid guy. Johnny, who's that guy? The stupid guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. I'm going to do a story about Tony. He got you. He got busted for suboxone. <laughs> Tony was the best. That guy was in more trouble. I tell you, I remember one time the captain came into B block. We had about 200 pounds of power. Tony Ayello. He says, uh, "Yo, what's going on here?" He said, "I don't know." Uh, by the commissary, but we don't sell that kind of pasta in the commissary, Mr. I am mean, talking to my bunk, and maybe he knows. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I gotta know money. I gotta know money. That's what I know. <laughs> Tony, you got me. You know how many times? Another guy. Another guy. They robbed him. I'm in the box of having the fight with Tony, with Jimmy and Mike. The, 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 the board guys robbed him. I come out of the box. I had to go get the right glasses back, the money. You know, these guys are douchebags. It's like, yo, bro, I mean, I, I don't understand. I'm in the whole... And this, one of our guys gets robbed, he's an older guy, he's a solid guy, he's a good guy, and you don't even step up and do nothing. So oh, I, when they robbed I, Tony, when they robbed yeah. Tony Aiello, I forgot all about oh, that. Yeah. Yeah, you <laughs> got out, you got out, went and get, that's right. I told wow. him, go get your fucking, go get your bro and tell him to come down here with his fucking knife or bring that fucking shit back. Yeah, I mean, Which, I who was that? Guys. Who was that? One guy from uh, the Midwest, but I got you. Yeah, yeah, all it was a black guy. All these, yeah. all these legendary gangs, they were all shaking when I did that. Talky, this one down, they were all scared. Oh, man, now you just call the guy down with the gang to come down. Uh, you know, go nice tonight. Yeah, you, you fucking walking into our old man cell and robbing them. We don't, I, I, I'm not that yeah. I don't know what kind of guys these people are, but when I'm around, it ain't happening, bro. Oh yeah, baby. Hey, man, I, I forgot all about that. I, I man, I, I, I totally that blanked out on that one. Had all these guys out in population when me and Tom were in the hole, nobody said it to nothing. When I came out, though, the leader of the whole fucking board gang came over and said, "Listen, man, I know you're yeah. a gangster. I know what kind of guy yeah. you are. This guy did this to one of your people. Your people were soft. They didn't do nothing. I know what kind of guy they, you are. They did. They did. did. That's right. Send them downstairs. Send them downstairs. And I was in Lewisburg. And and you know, no, oh, he had that. Um. So at the end of the day, I mean, it's just another continuous action. Okay, hold on, hold on real quick. Let me, let me, I just want to get this clarified. So what happens was, uh, so uh, I had a cell in that block real quick, uh, cell 206, whatever. I went to the hole, uh, you know, moved five. in. I lived yeah, like yeah, and, uh, 207, by the way. Yeah, you live, yeah. So 207, anyway, I go to the hole. The hole, the, the cell has contraband in the, in the walls, knives, drugs. Everything else. Pino doesn't want to leave. All the leave. good stuff. All the good All stuff. All the good stuff. Pino doesn't want to leave. He, he put, he, he dragged his feet. He didn't want to leave the block. Um, and anyway, there was some work that said, um, and then he made the comment to one of the Italian guys, I would have to do hit him with the lock and the sock. And I thought that was why, Jimmy, but now you're explaining more of the story. Uh, uh, okay, I got you. These guys, they're always looking for an excuse. Yeah, I got you. Look, the excuse to, 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 to come at me. I mean, but I'm what Rob was, you served time with me. You brought yeah. me served time with me. I've been all over yeah. the country, I've been all over the state. Have yeah. I ever given anyone the impression that I'm anything but a gorilla? 
No, no. And and uh, calm and poke the gorilla. I, I understand. I'm going to say one more thing. So I have had people. I'm not going to name them at this time. Like I said, I've had multiple calls. Well, after I put that statement out about you, I've had threats. Uh, you know, don't put that out. This and that. I've had some lawyers threaten me, but I. They said, you know, Benny. You know, Benny. He was a good kid, but he's crazy now. And I'm like, I'm going to say one thing about Benny. Benny's never lied to me or exaggerated about shit. Like, I, I can oh, honestly no, say I'm that. No, and I'm going to say, uh, um, I know I'm not going to get into it. You and Tommy had a little bit of this. And, and I, when I talked to Tommy, uh, he, I, he did, I didn't go into the whole story about this with him. But I said, hey, w w what do you think? Uh, I've never had Benny lie to me. He's incredible. And Tommy Reynolds and Rob. Okay, real quick. I said in this that Tommy and Benny had an incident. Yes, they did. I'm not going to go into that right now. They were sellies. Um, uh, Tommy was accused uh, later. Him and Benny had an argument when some of my brothers, the dirty white boys, hit Benny. Um, allegedly on contract from, uh, well, Benny, Benny talks about it, from uh, the Italians. Uh, I won't even say the guy's name. Danny Fama. And I like Danny, and I think Danny's a great guy, but that's who uh, allegedly gave the contract to the Dirty White Boy leader, who was, who was Dusty at the time, and then two guys of the Dirty White Boys, which was my brother at the time, I just left, went and, and tried to beat up Benny, and Benny beat them both up. Anyway, I then say, I talked to Tommy Reynolds. I did not go into this story or what Benny was saying about um, Mr. Arena or Johnny Hollywood. I didn't go into it. I just said, uh, you know, Benny's putting this out there. Benny's never lied to me, Tommy. Um, is Benny going to bullshit now? And he just said, Benny's not a liar, Rob. Um, so a bunch of people have been calling me and telling me Benny's crazy. He's lost his mind. I think I'm crazy too. I think a lot of us are all crazy. Benny's still a person and he has a story. That's why I'm doing this. But my point being was Tommy Reynolds said, look, uh, he didn't tell me to do the story. Tommy Reynolds did not. I did not tell him what was going on with this story. My, my only thing, because Tommy doesn't talk like that over the phone. Tommy is on a different path. He doesn't want to know nothing about crime or anything or anything like this. All Tommy said was, he said, Benny's, in other words, I can trust Benny, right? Like, am I losing my mind, Tommy? Like, Benny's never like, Benny's not a liar. That's what I want to say. That's what I'm trying to point out. But I had to make that clear because I didn't want people saying that Tommy Reynolds, like, gave the okay for this story. It's not. He didn't know nothing. I'm going to back up just a second. No, no. And, and, uh, call me poke the gorilla. I understand. I'm going to say one more thing. So I have had people, I'm not going to name them at this time. Like I said, I've had multiple calls. Well, after I put that statement out about you, I've had threats. Uh, you know, don't the put statement that out. about this that. I've had some lawyers. Stevie Mad Dog. They said, you know, Benny, you know, Benny, he was a good kid, but he's crazy now. And I'm like, I'm going to say one thing about Benny. Benny's never lied to me or exaggerated about shit. Like, I, I can honestly say that. No, and I'm going to say, uh, um, I know I'm not going to get into it. You and Tommy had a little bit of this, issue, and, and I, when I talked to Tommy, uh, he, I, he did, I didn't go into the whole story about this with him, but I said, hey, w w what do you think? Uh, I've never had Benny lie to me. He's incredible. And Tommy Reynolds said, Rob, Benny's, Benny's not going to lie. So, I mean, I, I just got to put that out there. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm not going to try to find you. Yeah. Cowards, cowards lie because they were afraid to face that those they accused. Cowards lie. You understand? I, you know, remember Tony Montana and Scarface? I love the best part of the whole movie. He said, I'm, I always tell the truth, even when I lie. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I, I yeah. don't have to lie. You know, he was a gangster. He was a man. He didn't care about nobody's opinion of him or anything he did, right? And listen, yeah. he didn't lie. He didn't do what? You know why? Because, listen, I have followed the rules of a certain lifestyle most of my life. Turn out to be a lie. Anybody who's out there who's growing up and who's listening and watching these movies, whose family's telling them what to do, I want them to know you're following a lie. You're better off going to become a Hollywood actor. They're even bringing guys like that into this 
my family I, without ben, me. You make a so really I, good point. Wait, you make a good point because here's the deal. And I've been saying this over and over again. And again, I go back to Francis because he's one of the most popular um, uh, uh, organized crime figures on the internet, okay? Or ex you know, right. right. I'm not a rat. I'm, okay. Okay. I'm not a rat. But <laughs> what I'm saying is this. There's nobody in the world ever did a day or a minute in jail because of Manny Gerritano. I'm so doing this for a reason. I'm doing this wrong for a reason. Because I want people to know what this really has turned out to be. It's a disgrace. But so, you've got but, abortions can go on in their soldiers using the police and manipulating and paying off lawyers to sell out other guys on the street. You know, they're stacking the deck against a good man who who, 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 who was entitled under the United States and, and New York State Constitution to be the, the procedural safeguards and, and protections when you step into the court of law. But when you got a guy's lawyer selling him out from the gate, he doesn't stand a chance. I'm in jail for a crime that no one other than Stevie Maddox said I committed. Listen, the victim. I, I got the victim's statement. I got the victim's statement. He, he, he said that he didn't do it. How am I in prison? The lawyer. What's his name? The lawyer. They, they destroy. The, I told the lawyer, oh, bring the witnesses into court. Okay. All of a sudden, I have no witnesses in the court. You know, this, what do you mean? If you're an attorney and you're representing the guy who, who paid you to represent him, why would you not call a witness into court that was identified at the scene of the crime as the person who committed the crime that your client is on trial for? Better yet. Why would you not call the eyewitness who identified the guy at the scene of the crime for stabbing the guy that your client is being charged with and accused for when no one ever said it was your client? You know, why would you? Why would these lawyers continue to conceal documentation such as the, the, the accusatory instrument where the cop committed perjury? I'm here on a perjured arrest. The cop said that the victim told him that I stand. Thirty days later, the cop testified in open court in fed in a different yeah. venue, different jurisdiction. Uh, did Benny Jerry tell? Did the victim ever identify Benny? No, no. Well, what was the first yeah, time? No, and the victim question, statement. Said I questioned him in the hospital. No. Did he, did he identify Benny as the stabber in the photo array? No. Did he identify Benny as, as the person who stabbed him in the lineup? No. Did he identify Benny as the person who stabbed him any, any other time? No. Do you have a picture or a video or a statement of anyone saying that it was Benny who stabbed this person at any time during the crime or the incident? No, I don't. You know, and my lawyer knew right there and then what was going on, but, you know, everybody... Your lawyer, I was, told, I was told yesterday, okay, and I'm just going to... I'll talk to you after. I was told yesterday that your lawyer offered you... that they offered you five years and your lawyer wanted you to take it, and that you were my being... My lawyer never told me of the plea. And I have the transcripts to prove Oh, I, I'm telling you what I was told yesterday. He, but, no, but listen, could... listen, listen. They're telling you that to justify it because I have raised this. I have the transcripts to prove it. Okay, June of 2013, I'm in Brooklyn, MDC. I have a court appearance in the state. The United States Marshals never produced me to court. At, the, at that hearing that I got not produced for, they offered me five years. I'm not there. They told the lawyer, the police offer is five years. Okay. Uh... The judge says on the record, when the defendant gets here, if and when he gets here, the next proceeding will talk about the plea. I produce the court the following, uh, the month after. I have the transcripts. The court said I would, not, not one time ever was the plea mentioned in court. So how was I supposed to know that a plea was mentioned in five years at, uh, uh, at the prior proceeding? So you're saying what? that the lawyer never said to you that... Vincent the Romano was, was the attorney. The so he tells me to take a plea, tell him to take, take a plea, uh, 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 at the next proceeding, we go and they says, oh, they're offering a plea of eight years. He never told me about the five-year plea. And the prosecutor said the eight-year plea is now off the table because we're going to trial. Then they turn around and they tell me, they tell me I'm having a persistent felony offender hearing. A persistent felony offender hearing. My lawyer told me I'm a first-time offender. I'm facing five years if I go to trial. The judge says, how can you, the judge says, how can you tell this man he's a first-time offender? He's got numerous felonies. He said, well, I never exactly said that. So I said, you want him. You know what, Rob? They switched stenographers after this hearing because they don't want this on the record. And I said, listen, Rob, you know me for a long time. I don't hallucinate. I'm not crazy. I know what's going on, you know. And I'm like, Your Honor, does this sound like this came from a guy from the street? That she wants to say I'm a street guy, right? The lawyer told me that you cannot use my federal conviction and sentence because it consists of a different language of law. Now, does that sound like it came from me? Does that sound like the guy who's practicing law for 40 years and he's sitting next to me? Well, here you are, you tell me now that I'm facing 20 years in jail just for a knife alone that you people don't have. So those transcripts, they disappeared. They brought in another stenographer, and those transcripts are gone. So I got, you know, listen, 
I mean, there were, there were people in this courtroom that are relatives and friends of mine. They're like, yo, there was a white lady here. All of a sudden, there's a black stenographer. We go to the courthouse. We call the stenographer's office. It's like, bro, every rule of law was broken. Now, people want to say it sounds crazy. No, this is, what do you think the jail cells and these prisons across the nation are packed because the lawyers do great jobs? That's not why the jail cells are packed. The prosecutors are supposed to pay this in their fucking line of work. The jail cells are packed because they're selling us out. Yeah, the plea bargain attorney. Yeah, you know, the So he never, he never told me about a five-year plea. Believe me when I tell you. When I seen what was going on, and I seen the way these fucking rats who walked me in like this Johnny Brain Simone. They call him Johnny Brain. And his group of people, they call him Johnny Brain, because they don't want the outsiders to know they call him Johnny Brain. So they call him John the Plumber. The fucking moron. He's always on tape. He's always fucking... He's on tape. In the Fed case, he's on tape telling a guy, a rat, that he's dealing with, that I sent my friend to shoot the owner of the restaurant to kill the guy because the guy gave the police a copy of the video. It's not even true. The owner of the restaurant got shot for totally different reasons. So who's, who, who, who's Johnny Burns? Who, who is he? Who is he? He's John McDavid's friend. Uh, all my friends, like all these douchebags friends from 13 years. You know, 13 years is a douchebag. That's who he is. So, Why is that? Douchebag. He's like the Jojo Russo's guy. A fucking real douchebag. You know? So he, he's telling a guy, and then in another case with Chicky DiMartino, he's telling the guy, he must, this guy goes around and he talks about all the fucking people. He never talks about his fucking drug deals. He never talks about his, none of his fucking shit that he does on tape. He's always talking about everybody else. Yeah, Chicky's a killer. He murders people for the combo family. Then he sent this guy to shoot this guy. In the meantime, I got to go put departure for that. The, the judge gave me the top end of the guidelines. He thinks I'm shooting, having people shot from a fucking prison cell because this guy's on fucking tape. You think he's man enough? To say, you think he's man enough to walk into the courtroom or say, hey, you're on, write a letter to the judge. You know, I was just, you know, I'm a blabbermouth. Like wait, 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 wait. Who, who is the guy been saying his name? Who, John Simone? That, that's Johnny Brains or whatever? Johnny Brains. I never even knew that. Okay, so. You have yeah, they, keep that, they keep that hidden the moment. Anyway, listen, so we'll talk more on the next show, but let people hear what's going on out there. Let them know that they can get me out tomorrow. All they got to do, they know what they got to do to get me out tomorrow, and we can all face each other face to face. Why continue to keep me here if you, if you are the men that you want the world to believe you are? Get me out tomorrow. You know you got witnesses that can come forward and get me out that you can tell them not to come forward, you fucking rats. Make them come forward. Okay. All right, so um, you're going to be cut off. So look at, I think in the next one, we're, we're probably going to have to go back and put maybe some more context in the beginning, okay? You know it's what I mean? Pleasure, Rob. It's always okay, a pleasure, Rob. Okay, baby. So do you know when you're going to be able to call back? Uh, probably tomorrow. Give Tommy the call and the right to tell him that we talk. Okay, okay, man. Take care. Have be great. Thanks, Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. At the end, if you heard him, he's talking specifically to Stevie Mad Dog, saying, you can get me out. In a nutshell, he's saying that people will not come forward because um, Stevie Mad Dog uh, is behind his conviction and that he knows the truth. There's a lot of people out there that know the truth, that Johnny Hollywood, which goes into more later, knows the truth, and that they can they can stop this, the, the tapes, I guess, whatever, and you guys can talk about it on the street, is what he's saying. There's no threats. I don't want no threats implied. Um, if you guys help get him out. And the Johnny Brains guy, I didn't catch the last name. Benny got an upward departure because this guy is on tapes uh, blabbing, saying that Benny um, shot somebody and that he got an upward departure. He's saying that that guy can come forward right now and say that that wasn't true. I don't really know what that would hurt, to be honest, as somebody that knows... It does something about federal law, but not necessarily state law. And I just had to put that out there. I don't know why people, I, matter of fact, statute of limitations probably, I don't know why people wouldn't want him to come out. Anyway, so there it is. Look, again, um, like I said, I think we need to go back and, 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 and we need to go and he needs to outline and name names. Okay, and I'm not saying that to name people and bust people. I'm saying that because if he's putting somebody like Stevie Mad Dog out there, who I believe from his attorney is a well-respected guy, okay, um, you can't just do that without connecting the dots more. So I'm I'm putting this out there now saying everybody should take a, a, a deep breath. Yes, we just heard what Benny said. Yes, okay. Um, I have always known him to be credible. That's what I'm going to say. This is not about me. 
So nobody should jump to conclusions and go go point fingers and say Stevie did this or Stevie did that or Johnny Hollywood this or the brains guy did that. Nobody should do that yet uh, or, or ever. I'm sorry. My, my point being, let, let him, he needs, he needs to. I don't even have the tapes, but I, so there needs to be context because he, 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 he's very specific. Like, I talked to Stevie here. This is what happened. This is what happened. Then I had we had a sit down with this person and the Gambino family. This person said that. Then I left and I said F you because they were trying to shake me down. Whatever, Johnny Hollywood, I'm gonna put it out there. And then another guy, one of Stevie's guys, knew about this. He names so he names people that know, like he names law enforcement officials, so it's a lot clearer. So pause until that one. I have to put this out there now. I've been saying I'm gonna do it for weeks. Um, I don't know what time. It's almost. It's after 12 o'clock in Arkansas. It's Tuesday. I'm gonna give this. I'm gonna try to send this over to the attorney in a minute, and we'll see what happens. Don't shoot the messenger. Um, and please, I need. To, I need to say something else. You guys that might be bothered by this or upset by this or whatever, please. Uh, Comicdink.net is my website. Even though I'm gonna change it and just do prison consulting and take out the legal work stuff. I do a YouTube channel. Please, please, please don't call me and threaten me or or send emails. That's like the worst thing in the world you can do to me. I have impulse control issues and I act poorly when threatened. I'm an idiot when threatened. And nobody's gonna come to Arkansas, especially in these neck of the woods and, and, and do anything to me, so stop it. Um, I wish you guys deal with Sammy and, and Michael and, and Jimmy, it's all right around your neighborhoods and all the other rats in your neighborhoods and, and instead of making idle threats towards me. And I'm not trying to be a smart ass. I'm just saying it's stupid. Um, I'll be in New York at some point in time. So you, we can, you, guys can, you guys can try to do whatever there. But it's it's you're, you're never going to come down here and there's nobody. New York City? What? Those boys are from New York City? I mean, that's that, where I live is Stickville, man. Uh, love it. I love it. But just please, because I've already gotten those stupid threats and all they do is just really irritate me and make me do stupid things. And I'll do stupid videos about you or something, you know, seriously. So I'm just saying, please don't do that. That's all I'm saying. Um, again, I, I think that nobody, if, if there's names, names that you know, hold on, hold on. That's all I'm saying. Uh, and please, um, I, I don't wish nobody harm. Uh, this is a life that people chose. Um, this is this is a guy that was in the life, right? No matter what anybody wants to say. And a lot of guys, time and time again, go read the internet. This isn't new, what Benny's doing. They've had Benny, there's sit-downs over Benny's before, and nothing was done. Um, people fear this guy uh, with good reason, because he doesn't take no shit, and he doesn't care about titles and names. I'm just saying that. This is not meant to be disrespectful. So please, um, uh, Mr. Arena and Mr. Hollywood, I hope you guys understand.